गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे वी विल टेक अप अ न्यू आस्पेक्ट दैट इज द जोलॉजिकल वर्क ऑफ रिवर वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट वेदरिंग एंड वी हैव लर्न दैट देर आर टू मेजर टाइप्स ऑफ वेदरिंग दैट इज द फिजिकल एंड द केमिकल वेदरिंग द मैकेनिक द फिजिकल वेदरिंग इट ब्रेक्स द रॉक्स इन टू smaller pieces whereas the chemical action it disintegrates and decomposes the rocks on the surface of the earth now the weathering process it takes place on the surface and it is in situ that is it takes place in its own place there is no removal of material involved in case of weathering now this decomposed rock material which is very weak it interacts with several natural geological agents like water which is precipitated like the wind the glaciers etc now these natural agents or the geological agents they modify the physical features or the geomorphology or the outer appearance of the earth and this has been taking place ever since the earth was born and this keeps on changing that is to say the evolution of topography is a dynamic process it is not static it keeps on changing with time now the <coughs> rivers what are rivers rivers are the water that flows from higher gradient to the lower gradient so you we have got rivers we have got glaciers we have got winds oceans and lakes these have been modifying the surface of earth now if we look at this we, you are all familiar with the hydrological cycle we know that almost <coughs> this uh, the oceans have around 97.2% of the whole water that is present in our earth that means we have only 2.8% of fresh water that is present now this ocean water it gets evaporated then this gets precipitated within the oceans as well as on the land and when it precipitates on the land it is either in the form of rain at the lower altitudes or snow at the higher altitude now this precipitated water and the snow it moves down the slopes and <coughs> moves over the hills on to the plains and finally it comes down again into the oceans some part of it gets infiltrated and it moves in the form of ground water and some of it is stored within the glaciers and the ice sheets around 2.15% of the water is stored in the glaciers and the ice sheets and only 0.65% of the entire water budget it is part of the atmosphere rivers lakes etc and is fresh water and that sustains then almost entire life that is present on the earth maybe plants or the animals so this is to show you the dif- distribution of uh water in the different segments now the water that <coughs> precipitates it moves down under this action of gravity through various channels these channels are initially smaller at the higher level and as the water moves down it increases the width and <coughs> uh, the amount of water also keeps on increasing as the tributaries they join together and come down and from the hills the river comes down on the plains and then flows into the oceans so in this diagram you can see that 
you have got this is known as the water divide so what whatever is precipitating in this portion will move down in this direction this is will move down in this direction this is uh, entire drainage basin that means that whatever uh, rain has precipitated in this region will move down and it will reach at this point so <coughs> the move moving water down the slopes it has got a tremendous amount of energy now when the water is moving down as i told it has got a lot of energy so this energy depends upon what is the slope over which it is moving that is the gradient and how much water is being discharged how much is has precipitated what is the discharge so higher the gradient and discharge more would be the energy now part of this energy is used in overcoming the resistance offered by the river bed and the banks so the water moves down on the sides you have got the banks and at the base you have got the river bed so the maximum velocity of water is in the top central part of the channel through which it is flowing now the water <coughs> which is flowing it develops different types of flows these are termed as the laminar flow the turbulent flow or the helicoidal flow now in this diagram you can see this is the laminar flow where it is moving in a smooth pattern and this is the turbulent flow so as we can see that if you draw a cross section of the river channel because of the resistance at the bed of the river minimum velocity is here and as one moves up the maximum velocity is at the top we'll be discussing this linear and turbulent flow in next slide now <coughs> in this uh, two diagrams i tried to describe what is the laminar laminar flow and what is the turbulent flow so laminar flow it means that the different layers of water move in parallel and regular pattern or regular path and if we can we assume that this water is moving in this channel or say a pipe the maximum velocity would be in the central part as the sides would offer a resistance to its movement now in case of turbulent flow the different layers of water move in irregular colliding paths they are not moving in parallel and regular path but they keep on colliding and it is irregular the water not only moves in the forward direction but it can move in the upward and even the backward direction so here the path of water flow are irregular as different parts of the moving water mix together or form a smaller circular region that resemble whirlpools i know understand that most of you must be knowing what is a whirlpool or what is a swirling path hindi mein kehte hain bhavar now this swirling path happens when the velocity of water moving in a channel reaches a certain critical velocity and this can be commonly seen during the time of floods if you have seen the river during the winter times and the, during the monsoon times you can see that during the winter's time the same river would have a laminar flow where you will not find much disturbance whereas during the monsoons when the precipitation has taken place those the water becomes turbulent and at times you have got the circular movement of the water <coughs> that results in the formation of fold pools now whether the flow within the channel would be laminar or turbulent it depends upon a number of parameters that control the velocity of the water 
Now velocity in turn it is controlled by the slope or the gradient. So we have got maximum gradient in the hilly terrain. Then it also depends upon discharge. Now the discharge of a stream keeps on increasing at as the stream moves down the slope because the number of tributaries add water to it. Then it also depends on the channel shape and size as well as the amount of sediment that is being carried by the river that is known as the sediment load. What sediments, how much sediments it is carrying. So these are the parameters that decide whether the flow in the river would be laminar or turbulent. Naturally, why I am trying to explain this is because the laminar flow will not exert that much of force or energy on the channel through which it is passing in comparison to the turbulent flow. Now, here I have tried to explain the shape and size of the channel through which the water is flowing. Now we can take this channel here, the channel is very broad and in this channel certain volume of water is flowing through say point A along the cross section of a river that is A1. Now for this volume of water it will take a certain time. So in certain time this volume of water will pass through point A. Now if we move ahead and the channel becomes narrower, now when the channel becomes narrower the same volume of water has to pass through this channel and hence the length of this volume would increase that is the velocity of the water will have to be increased in case it has to carry the same amount same volume of water through that fixed particular time because time of travel is the same for this place and this place now in order to carry this volume through a narrow channel the river has no option but to increase the velocity so here in this place the flow would be laminar but when the channel becomes narrower and the velocity increases, the energy increases, the water becomes turbulent as compared to the this place where the valley is wider. Same as being shown in this diagram. Here this is a wider valley. Now as it the well uh, channel, it's a channel. So as this channel is broad, here it would be laminar, but as this uh, narrows down the water becomes turbulent and hence it uh, whatever comes its way it will try to remove or uh, exert enormous force. This is the plan and cross-sectional profile of a river right from the point from where it is starting. These are the points from where the river is starting, smaller channels and they join together so the smaller channels will join together and as this moves down the slope the amount of the of water will keep on increasing and even the width of this channel keeps on increasing so <coughs> uh, you can see that this is point a here a uh, cross section has been made across this channel and the cross section will appear something like this. Now at this point B where the valley becomes more wide the shape becomes like this and from this point the uh, it is the hilly region and here it comes onto the plains where it will have different morphology that we will be discussing and at this point the channel becomes very very wide. So right from the this A1 point so you have the gradient is very high as it comes down so here beyond this point 3 and here this is the point where it enters the plains and then gradually this gradient 
keeps on decreasing and here this meets the uh, C where you have got the formation of the delta and this is known as the mouth of the so during its journey from the hills to the sea that is from the highest of the elevations up to the sea level the energy of the flowing water within the channel keeps on changing and accordingly the river carries out erosion transportation and deposition now whether there would be erosion or the sediments would only be transported or they would be deposited it depends upon the energy of the river as discussed earlier the energy of the flowing water depends upon the slope which is maximum in the hilly terrain amount of water which keeps on increasing as the river moves down the slope because a number of tributaries keep on adding to the main or the trunk stream then the width of the channel here it is very narrow this keeps on broadening as it comes down in the plains and in the plains the channel <coughs> becomes wider and wider and near the sea it is almost the widest then it also depends on the surface roughness this we discussed earlier and the amount and the type of sediment load which is being transported that we will be discussing now now while the river is flowing in the channel the velocity is very important and within the channel there is a velocity distribution across the channel like if we have a stream which is flowing along a straight course now when it is flowing along the straight course there is resistance offered by the base of the channel as well as by the margins as a result of which the maximum velocity is in the top central part so here you can see that with this is the region which is having the maximum velocity and this keeps on increasing decreasing sorry as we move towards the margins and the floor of the channel however in case the river is curved the channel is curved this such a pattern is known as the meandering pattern and now in this <coughs> in the if you see that part of this it is a straight channel so here the maximum velocity would be in the central region now when the river turns then the minimum velocity would be towards the inner side and the maximum velocity would be towards the outer side this we can see when we are moving on our bike on the road and if suddenly there is a turn then one has to slow down in order to cope up with the turn or if we want to maintain the, the same speed then the uh, if we want to uh, do not want to reduce our speed then we have to take a larger uh, turn around uh, at a uh, uh, adopting a longer distance so when the river bends here we can see that on the outer side in order to carry the same amount of water it adopts uh, the in, it increases the velocity on this side there is relatively decrease in the velocity similar is the pattern here where there is lesser velocity towards the inner side and more velocity towards the outer side. as a result this maximum velocity it is concentrated in this part this is the sectional view here in this portion it is towards the central part and here it is towards the left hand side and accordingly the river is deepened in this part 
because the velocity energy is higher here so it is uh, the uh, depth is more and here the depth is more on the, this side so <coughs> then on relatively since the velocity is lesser on this side so there would be a deposit the deposition of sediments both this side and here and here on this side the banks are eroded or they are cut down so when the channel path bends then the maximum velocity does not maintain a straight course maximum velocity is then concentrated towards the outer side of the bend here this is another diagram that explains because it is uh, the path is curved so the water is not moving in a uh, laminar pattern rather it becomes more turbulent towards the outer side now this is a cross section prepared along the uh, river channel here this is the uh, has the maximum elevation and here this is the river meeting the sea you can see that there is a change in the gradient right from a steeper it becomes gentler and gentler as it moves towards the sea and if we make a cross section across the channel here as we discussed earlier the it is very uh, narrow or it is v in v shape and here at this point y the channel is very broad with the development of flood plains that we will be discussing so this is the normal uh, stream which is flowing however during the time of floods the river occupies a wider plain however in this region even if the great uh, the amount of water is high it does not make any flood plain because here it will keep on flowing in this channel with a uh, higher velocity so you have the naturally this has got higher velocity the energy is high so this zone is more prone to or rather most prone to erosion this is the in between you have the transitional zone and in this part since the energy keeps on reducing because of the lowering of the gradient so most of the sediments get deposited in this part so we can say you have the erosional zone transitional zone and the zone of deposition uh, this is again the same uh, thing we try to explain it with another diagram here this is the starting point of the river the a number of small rivulets they join together to form a main river and in the upper course we can, uh, we have defined here a number of parameters how they change as the river moves from higher elevation to the lower elevation like the gradient it is highest in the upper course and it as it comes down it reduces similarly roughness of the channel bed since it has got more of energy there is more of erosion and hence the bed of the channel is not smooth it is always rough filled with boulders large boulders are there most of you if you have been to a hilly terrain you must have seen that the rivers they carry a lot of larger boulders so this has as a result the roughness is very poor more rough however if you come down to the plains like you visit uh, if we say say talk about river ganga then if you go up high higher up towards the gangotri side come down towards the here you can say you have the rishikesh haridwar and then you have the uh, kanpur varanasi there the size of the sediments is very small and so accordingly the roughness of the channel would be smoother as compared to the roughness in the upper course 
Similarly, the elevation of the channel bed, it keeps on decreasing. The slope of the channel bed, it also keeps on decreasing. The load, that means the sediments it is carrying, the size, it also keeps, keeps on decreasing. Here the sediments, as I told, would be having larger dimensions and as they move down, the dimensions or the size keeps on reducing depending on the energy levels. So similarly energy it also keeps on decreasing the <coughs> coarser sediments to finer sediments. However, since a number of streams are joining together, tributaries are joining together, the discharge as compared to this point and as uh, to this point it keeps on increasing many many folds and as we discussed the channel width also keeps on uh, increasing the water depth also increases the velocity of water also increases because the velocity of the water is not only controlled by the gradient but it also is controlled by the amount of water that is flowing through the uh, channel. So the water velocity and the total load, the total sediments because the sediments are brought out from all the <coughs> tributaries of the uh, basin. So the amount of sediment load is uh, of course the size is smaller however the total amount of load keeps on increasing as we move towards the sea. Now there is a term base level. Base level is the level up to which a river can erode its channel or below which the water will not erode the channel. So the stream of water cannot cut deeper than its base level. Now if we are at the highest elevations so this was say earlier the uh, altitude of the uh, river now it keeps on eroding its base and if there is a lake in between it uh, prevents or it uh, prevents the energy uh, the water when it enters and it slows down and then when it again moves down the energy keeps on increasing however in due, in due course of time this is area is eroded and ultimately this is the level up till which the base of the valley is eroded so that is the original profile and this becomes the profile uh, formed because of the erosion due to the flowing water. So now this is the base level that means the water uh, the it cannot be eroded below this point and base level uh, so is, it is defined as the lowest level to which the running water can flow and erode it erode. So there are two types of base levels one is the local base level which is caused because of the presence of this water body or the lake and then you have got the uh, permanent base level which is this one and the the sea the erosion of the valley floor cannot be below the sea level so sea level is known as the ultimate base level below which the river cannot erode now there are different processes of erosion so erosion means the removal of the material from its place. So these are hydraulic action, solution, abrasion, attrition and cavitation. Now hydraulic action refers to the ability of the flowing water to pull, pick up and move rock and sediments. Now if we have precipitation you must have seen that the, when the water moves down the slope it carries along with it the num a number of sediments whatever material is there because it has got energy so it will carry them along uh, with it while it is flowing on the surface of the water so it will pick up whatever comes and uh, depending on the energy that it has 
फिर अनदर इज सोल्यूशन सोल्यूशन वी हेड ऑल्सो डिस्कस्ड इन विदरिंग बट वेन सोल्यूशन वॉज कंसिडर्ड इन विदरिंग दैट वॉज इन सी टू दैट मीन्स इट एट इट्स ओन प्लेस वाइल इन इरोजन द मटीरियल इज कैरीड फ्रॉम इट्स ओन प्लेस सो द फ्लोइंग वाटर इट डिजॉल्व अ नंबर ऑफ लॉट ऑफ मटीरियल लाइक यू हैव अ लाइम स्टोन टेरेन दैन द बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्शन ऑफ वाटर विद द लाइम स्टोन कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट इज डिजॉल्व एंड इट्स मूव इन सोल्यूशन now there is another process that is known as abrasion abrasion i think you must all be familiar with a number of abrasives which were used in our daily life like the normal rubber you use for uh, removing the what you have written with the help of pencil eraser so that eraser is an abrasive sandpaper regmal that is another abrasive by which we remove the uh, say the upper most paint or is smooth that is used for smoothing the surface now you must also be knowing that the sandpapers they are coming in different numbers and the number depends on the size of the grains that are present on the surface of the sand paper the black sand paper it has got coarser sediments or coarser particles which are used for rubbing and whereas fine these are sand papers which have got with they are used for smoothing the surface of the material over which they are rubbed similarly the nail cutters at the in the nail cutters you also find some abrasive by which the nails are smoothed on the there's a rough surface and that smoothens the nails similarly reti jisko hum kehte hain reti reti means the file so that file is used to uh, polish or to smoothen the rough surfaces so abrasion is a process of erosion Uh, which happens when the material being transported it wears away or it breaks away at the surface over time so rough surfaces are broken down and the surface becomes smoothing it is the process of friction caused by scuffing scratching and <laughs> rubbing off away of the material now the intensity of abrasion depends on the hardness of the material which is used as an abrasive like as i told you in case of sand paper how concentrated the effort is for how much time the abrasion is going on how much energy is there and what is the mass of the moving particles now in case of rivers the sediments which are carried along with the river they strike the valleys floor as well as the sides of the valley in the higher rocky terrain and because of this impact the valley floor as well as the uh, sides they get strated they get smoothened depending on the size of the uh, uh, the particles of the sediments which are striking the surface similarly those particles which are striking they also get smoothed now you can see in this diagram that the pebbles and the cobbles they also become very smooth rounded because because when they are traveling from higher altitude the rough surfaces they get broken down and they attain a spheroidal or a spherical shape with the surfaces very smoothed and such type of boulders or cobbles and pebbles you can get a lot in uh, uh, foothill areas like if you have been to uh, hardwani or if you have been to kadgodam or rishikesh haridwar you can find a lot of such pebbles and cobbles which have rounded now this rounding 
or the uh, smoothening of the surface is because of the process of abrasion. The sediments being carried by the river water are constantly bombarded as a result of the even the floor of the valley channel and the sides they get smooth smoothened. Now depending on their size they may get ribbed or they may get striations and <coughs> smoothening also takes place depending on the size. So there is another po process of erosion that is attrition where the coarser sediments that are being transported downstream along a riverbed they regularly collide amongst each other. They are not colliding with the floor of the uh, valley but they collide with each other and now their regular impact uh, makes them smaller and smaller and those larger boulders they are gradually broken into smaller fragments. So the striking of the grains amongst themselves results in becoming they are becoming a smaller and smaller and such a process is known as attrition. And there is another process of erosion that is known as cavitation. This occurs uh, near the waterfalls. Now what happens when the water is falling along a waterfall then along with this water a lot of air is trapped within these uh, the water and these this trapped air it moves down the water which is filled in the at the base of the waterfall and they travel deep inside and when these uh, bubbles they touch the floor of the uh, rock they explode and when they explode they release a lar large amount of energy it's just like a hammering of the already weathered surface and that results in the uh, erosion or the removal of the material. So <coughs> these are the these were the different processes involved in erosion. Now we'll discuss some of the landforms that are caused due to the erosion of river by erosion by river. Now river system is also known as a fluvial system. The river system is also known as fluvial system just like uh, we'll also discuss the when the erosion or the geological work is done by wind that is known as aeolian system. So we are going to discuss the landforms formed by fluvial system. Now the first and the foremost or the important geomorphic feature formed because of the fluvial erosion are the V-shaped valleys. Now what happens in the hilly terrain as we discussed the gradient is very high so the energy of the flowing water is very high. Now this flowing water carries along with it a large amount of sediments. Now these sediments they because of their higher density and weight they travel all along the floor of the valley and when they travel along the floor of the valley they act as tools and cut the valley vertically downwards. It acts like a saw. Aara jisko kehte Aare ki tarah aare se hai wo usko jase ki hum lakdi kaatte hai usi tarikke se this flowing water having tremendous amount of energy and carrying these sediments they cut the valley vertically down and relatively the lateral cutting is absent or very little insignificant as cut con uh, as uh, compared to the vertical cutting. So as a result the valley becomes v-shaped. You can see that the valley is v-shaped in nature. Here I have tried to give three examples. You can see that the valley is and since this is in the hilly region you can see that the amount of water is not very large. The discharge is not very large but the energy is extremely high as a result of it there is vertical cutting. 
Now under extreme conditions or under the favorable conditions this V-shaped valley could be converted into vertical gorges or they are also known as canyons. Here this is the uh, example of uh, this uh, river coming from the Himalayan region where you have got a narrow gorge which has formed. Now this is under favorable condition. Now what could be those favorable conditions? The favorable conditions could be that there could be uh, some weak plane along at this place and because of the weak plane they, that are present in the rocks the river has been able to cut the vertical uh, has been able to cut it vertically up uh, vertically similarly this is uh, another example where you can see that the river which is flowing with extremely high energy it has cut the rocks vertically and the valley is very narrow so it is a very narrow v-shaped valley or rather a vertical cutting is there similarly this is a river that flows deep inside and this is in, in from the Kutch region where you can see that earlier it was flowing at this level gradually because of the favorable conditions it has incised or it has cut this valley vertically downwards so it could be because of the extremely high energy conditions it could be because of the presence of weak planes or it could be because of the poor mythology or poor rock type if there are some rock types which are very prone to uh, erosion then you can have uh, these gorges and canyons another type of uh, landform are the waterfalls and the rapids waterfalls means there's a sudden break in slope and there's vertical movement now when i was talking about this uh, the process of uh, erosion then we had discussed that in the uh, along the waterfalls there's cavitation so when the water is falling like this you have got water and the air trapped in this and the air when it is uh, touches this floor of the bot bottom of this valley it explodes so there the cavitation takes place so you have got waterfalls then rapids means if there is a rock which is more resistant it does not erode just like the other surrounding rocks then there is a sudden change in the uh, gradient because of the presence of some these are known as gradient uh, the uh, rapids and because of this rapid here the uh, water is very very turbulent now these are the famous Gwadar Falls uh, in the Jabalpur area and these are the Jog Falls of the Karnataka and this is another waterfall in the Himalayan region so we can see that these are very picturesque landforms that are present in the uh, rocky terrain and the extremely high energy conditions are there. Now this is another very uh, significant landform which is seen. These are known as the potholes. Here we can see that you have got cylindrical holes. So now because of this abrasion what happens when the energy is high the water as I told you not only moves in the forward direction but it also moves in a circular pattern now and you have got the eddies and the swirls now when there is a circular movement of water these uh, smaller pieces of uh, rocks are the, known as the uh, cobbles and pebbles they are caught up within these circular motion and they grind the surf, uh, this uh, rock at the base of the valley and because of this grinding effect a number of uh, tool by these tools there is a circular uh, depression that is made on the valley floor and these are known as uh, the potholes and you can see here that it is almost like somebody has drilled it 
Similarly, you can see a number of potholes. Here also earlier a number of potholes were present, but the river has cut down and you can see half cut potholes present on the sides. So these potholes are uh, typical features where when the energy is, it is not necessary that the energy of the river is the same this time. It has decreased due to certain reasons, but at the time it was formed, it is, uh, the energy was high. Or even here, during the time of floods, the energy could be high and that can result in further excavation of these potholes. So this is the mechanism of formation of potholes where you have got the swirling movement of the water and they are, are caught up as the tools and they dig it inside the rock. Then another feature are, is the escarpment. Escarpment is nothing but a steep slope or a long cliff that forms as a result of erosion or faulting. Faulting is a process which you will be learning in structural geology that is uh, the offsetting of the beds. So uh, as a result of faulting or erosion we have vertical steep slopes and that they, they are known as escarpments. So this is these are the escarpments in the uh, Deccan Basalt province in the western Himalayan region. Similarly, because of erosion on the relatively softer materials, closely spaced micro channels are developed on the hill slopes. They are common in spar sparsely vegetated drylands where the intense rainfall occurs at regular intervals. So because of the rainfall, the surface you can, you can see these are known as the rills, very fine, narrow uh, channels that are gradually developing and these uh, develop into, uh, further get modified into gullies and then another landform which uh, we encounter, they are the questas. Questa is a ridge with a gentle slope on one side. So we have got this gentle slope on this side and a steep slope on this side. Now this is uh, observed in places where this rock, you can see this is inclined towards this side and the inclination is not very steep. And here the slopes develop along the dip of the beds and so these are known as dip slopes. So dip slopes are gentle and towards this side this material which was lying below it, vertically below it, is not that resistant, is not that strong. So it gets eroded. So because of this erosion the slopes here on this side are steeper and it is a softer layer and the questas form along the low inclined dip slopes of the rock. So this is a questa, whereas in case of hogback, this, uh, the inclination of the dip slope is also very high and the slopes on the side, they are also very high. So hogback uh, is again a narrow ridge or a series of hills with narrow crest and steep slopes of nearly equal inclination on both the sides. In this case, case Cuesta, the inclination is low on one side, steeper on the other side. In case Hogback, the inclination is steep on both the sides. So these are uh, some of the uh, prominent landforms that are observed if we look at uh, the geomorphy setup of the area which is modified by the river system. Then we have got another features like the Misa, Butte. Now the Misa and Butte, Misa is an isolated uh, elevated land 
with a flat top and bounded by steep escarpments thus displaying a characteristic ta table top shape so you can see it just looks like as if it is a table the surface is flat and with the uh, margins they are very steeply inclined or by the amount by the presence of vertical escarpments similarly butte it, it is an isolated hill with the steep often vertical sides and a small relative flat top it is smaller than these so this is smaller than the mesa and flat top plateaus are specifically known as table lands so this flat top <coughs> plateaus they also are referred to as table lands then one very important uh, feature caused because of erosion subsequent erosion it is not uh, the erosion is not at the first instance first of all there is deposition of sediments and because of the changing tectonic conditions or because of the change in the climatic conditions the river which is flowing it cuts through its own deposits now you can see here that this deposit it was formed by the deposition made by the river which is like coming from here now then there is another there river which is growing like this now this deposit it has been cut down vertically by a river which is flowing along this channel now this these deposits that that means the river was once flowing at this level but it has vertically cut down because of certain conditions that we will be discussing later on so this such places are known as terraces similarly you can see this is a gola river Uh, coming down from uh, Nainital at the Kargudan, you can uh, see this uh, yourself. So this is the flood plain that is made by the river. This region now, because of certain changing conditions, because of the upliftment of the Himalayan mountains, this river has cut down, cut through its own flood plain. So now this becomes a terrace. I think you must be aware of what is terrace in your house. जिसको हिंदी में छज्जा कहते हैं सो दिस इफ यू स्टैंड ऑन दिस टेरेस यू कैन लिव डाउन वर्टिकली अगेन दिस इज द क्लोजर सेक्शनल व्यू ऑफ द टेरेस सो इवन इफ देर आर टाइम ऑफ फ्लड्स द रिवर अमाउंट ऑफ वाटर विल इट फीस बट सिंस इट हैज बीन कट डाउन वर्टिकली द रिवर water or the le water level does is not able to uh, reach even up to this level uh, the older uh, flood plain of the river so these were some of the uh, features regarding the erosion by the river system and uh, on next turn we'll be taking up the transportation and deposition by river but one thing one has to keep in mind whether there would be erosion transportation or deposition it depends on the energy of the river if energy is more there would be erosion as and where there is more energy there is erosion and if there is lesser amount of energy then the there is deposition of the sediments so thank you and we'll continue uh, with our lecture in the second part